Today we're going to look at the subtle problem in set theory of defining the Cartesian product of two sets. So let's spell it out a little bit more clearly. So given two sets A and B, how do we carefully define the Cartesian product, which we'll call A cross B? And it's generally defined as all ordered pairs AB such that A comes from A and B comes from B. Now this may not seem problematic, but if you look at the axioms of set theory, it's actually a little bit tricky to define such an object via the axioms. And so in particular, the trickiest part is to define this ordered pair right here. So the video today, we will sort out the definition of this ordered pair. And in order to do that, we'll use one of the axioms from zermelo frankel set theory known as the axiom of pairing. The axiom of pairing doesn't say that there exists an ordered pair. That would be like a little bit too easy. It says there exists something called an unordered pair. So let's look at it a little bit more carefully. So this axiom says given two sets X and Y, there exists a set whose only elements are X and Y. So in other words, there's a set that only has two elements. One of them is X and one of them is Y. And so, i.e., there is an ordered pair, the set containing just x and y and nothing else. Okay, so now we want to use this ordered pair, or sorry, this axiom of pairing, in order to define an ordered pair. And there are several ways to do this. I'm going to go over the one that is most standard at this moment. So, here's what we'll do. We'll define the ordered pair a, b, to be the set containing the set containing A and the set containing A, B. And we're assured that this object exists. Why is that? We know that this unordered pair or doubleton A, B exists from the axiom of pairing. Then we've got the set containing A and the set containing A, B. So we know the set containing only these two exists again from the axiom of pairing. Okay, now we want to show that this definition of the ordered pair satisfies really the defining condition of the ordered pair in the first place. And that is if AB equals CD, then A equals C and B equals D. So that's the claim that we want to prove here. And we're going to do this in two cases. So it may not seem like we need two cases, but I think it's maybe easiest to do it in two cases. And the first case is what happens if A is equal to B? Okay, so let's see. If we've got A is equal to B, that tells us that the doubleton AB is really just a singleton A. But that means using our definition from the ordered pair up here, we see that the ordered pair AB is really just the set containing the set containing A. Again, because AB is equal to A. But now that's got to be equal to also the set containing C and the set containing CD because that's equal to CD and we're assuming that AB is equal to CD. That tells us that this guy right here, well, that tells us since this guy right here is a singleton, this guy over here is a singleton as well. So let's maybe underline that. So this must also be a singleton because it's equal to this singleton. So in other words, the set containing C must be equal to the set containing CD because otherwise this would be a set with two elements. But that means that D must be equal to C. Okay, so now we've got A is equal to B and C is equal to D, and we really just need one more equality to finish this off. So let's maybe rewrite this equation using this D is equal to C. Notice that gives us the set containing the set containing A is equal to the set containing the set containing C. But that means that the set containing A is equal to the set containing C because we've got two singletons there. They're equal to each other. That means each element has to be equal to each other. But then we can apply that one more time to see that this means that A is equal to C. 
So let's see, we have A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to D. They are all equal, but that's definitely a special case of this A equals C and B equals D under our setup of A is equal to B. Okay, so now let's move on to our next case when A is not equal to B. Now we're ready to look at our second and final case when A is not equal to B. I'm gonna start by taking this equation and rewriting it using our definition of the ordered pair. So maybe I'll just put it as note that we have the set containing the set containing A and the set containing AB must be equal to the set containing the set containing C and the set containing CD, like that. Okay, so these two sets are equal. Notice that this set over here on the left only has two elements. This only has two elements as well, but one of those elements is the set containing CD. So since these two sets are equal, that tells us that the set containing CD must be an element from the set containing A and the set containing AB, right? Just by equality of sets here. Okay, but let's see. If this single element, which is a set itself, is in this set containing two elements, it must be exactly one of those elements. So let's see. That tells us that the set containing CD is equal to the set containing A, or the set containing CD is equal to the set containing AB. Right? So it's got to be equal to one of these. So let's see what happens if it's equal to this one. Well, notice this guy right here is a singleton. It's the singleton A. That means that this also is a singleton. That tells us immediately that C is equal to D. Okay, but now if C is equal to D, we're kind of back into the situation from case one where we've just replaced the roles of A, B, and C, D. And you can follow this very, very quickly to see that A is equal to B, which is a contradiction of our setup where A is not equal to B. But there are only two possibilities here. We've shown this possibility is not true. That means that this possibility must be true. So we have CD is equal to AB. Okay, so let's maybe gather that information up here and then we'll finish it off. So by using the fact that this element CD comes from this set over here, we have determined that the set containing AB is equal to the set containing CD. Now we're ready to do the same sort of analysis, but starting with this one. So we've got this set containing C must be an element of this set over here on the left. So let's write that down. We have the set containing C must be an element of the set containing A, the set containing A, B. But if it's in this set, it must be one of those two elements in this set. So we have the set containing C is equal to the set containing A, or the set containing C is equal to the set containing A, B. But let's look at this second one. Notice the left-hand side is a singleton. That means the right-hand side is also a singleton. But if the right-hand side is a singleton, that tells us that A is equal to B, which is a contradiction because the case that we're working in is that A is not equal to B. So that means that in fact, we know that A is equal to C because the set containing A is equal to the set containing C. So let's write that down. Right now we have A is equal to C and we've got this other one up here which is boxed in blue. So going back up to this one which is boxed in blue, we'll see that that means the set containing AB is equal to the set containing AD where I've replaced C with A because of this equality. Now there's a single element in each of these sets which is not equal to A, but these two sets are equal. So that means those two elements must be the same. In other words, B must be equal to D. But that's exactly what we were going for. And so this indeed is a valid way to carefully define this ordered pair in a way that it contains exactly the characteristic that we want. And that's a good place to stop.